31, let's take a look at the square root property. We use it frequently, um, but, but typically I don't solve quadratic equations too often using the square root property. The only time I really use this is when I have x squared equal to a number, and then I don't need to factor or anything like that. So when x squared is just equal to k, then you have two square roots. You could either get the positive square root of k or the negative square root of k. And if that seems a little off to you, let's just take a look at this, this um, example 2a. So this is saying solve each quadratic equation. Now again, because I have something that's squared and equal to a number, right? There's no x terms over here. I am going to use the square root property. So I will take the square root of both sides. And what you have to remember to do is if you're starting with a number that's squared, a variable that's squared, you don't know if you started with the positive square root of that number or the negative square root. So technically my answer here is plus or minus four. Right? And we tend to forget to put the plus or minus, so we want to just be mindful of that. And if I erase these square root symbols and we think back to our original problem, right? There are two numbers that when I square them, square to 16, right? Positive four squares to 16 and negative four also squares to 16. Now I do want to be careful when you go to check something like this on your calculator, I, I want to mention this because I see this error all the time. Students will say, hey, Miss A, I typed in negative four squared to my calculator and it told me it was negative 16. Now, you didn't really type in negative four quantity squared. Your calculator is doing PEMDAS. So it's doing the exponent first. So four squared is 16. And then it's doing positive 16 times negative one, which is negative 16. If you want to see negative four squared, you need to protect that negative with parentheses. So this time the square is getting applied not just to the four, but also to the negative symbol. And so you can see that quantity, negative four squared is 16 in the same way that four squared is 16. So I just gave you that little warning, be careful what you're plugging into your calculator so you make sure it's matching what you actually want to calculate. All right, so if we play this out, right, with x squared equaling negative 144, well, I know x is going to equal the positive or negative square root of negative 144, and this kicks us back to section 2.4. Let's take out the i first. So x will equal plus or minus i times the square root of 144. And the square root of 144 happens to be a whole number, so my two roots here are plus or minus 12i. Okay, now over here for example C, I have this nice binomial that's squared. And while we haven't gotten to completing the square yet, we're about to, just trust me that this could have been a problem where you were initially completing the square and you got it down to this form. So you have this binomial squared equaling a number. And then the same shenanigans can happen. We can square root both sides and I will get X minus eight is equal to the positive or negative square root of 24. Now with 24, we can break that down into what, eight and three, and eight goes two, two, two. So I have a pair of twos, and I have two times three left under the radical. So this is going to be x minus eight is going to be equal to plus or minus two root three. All right, and the only thing, oh, that's not true. It's not two root three, excuse me. A two and a three were left under the radical. So it's plus or minus two root six. Now I need to solve for x, so I'm going to add eight to both sides. These are not like terms, right? You can't add a radical to a constant. That's not how radicals and constants work. So this will just be eight plus or minus two root six. If you wanted to be fancy, you could go ahead and factor out the two from each of these. You don't need to, but just to show ya, you could have said this was two times four plus or minus root six. You don't need to, all right? So don't, don't think you have to. In fact, let me just erase it. I don't want people to think that's what you have to do. Just want you to see that that's an option. All right, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how you complete the square next. I'll catch you in a bit, bye.